فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم That is what the grammarians they say. This is according to the majority of the grammarians. The author started it by saying يقولوا Other scholars when you look at their books they, they don't say يقولوا they say قالا like Ibn Malik مثلا what did he say? قال محمد هو ابن مالك أحمد رب الله خير مالك مصليا على النبي المصطفى وآله وآله المستكملين الشرفا واستعين الله في ألفية مقاصد النحو بها محوية so he said قال محمد بن هو ابن مالك he also find the same as شرف الدين العمريطي in his نظم of الورقات قال شرف what did he say? his kitab he said قال قال الفقير شرف العمريطي ذو العجز والتقصير والتفريط الحمد لله الذي قد أظهر علم الأصول للوراء وأشهر so he said قال الفقير so قال قال scholars start their book with he start قال is a past past verb but he chose to start his book by saying what يقول why would he start his book with the مضارع of the uh, of the verb يقول the scholars they said because the khutbah, the introduction that we're in right now, it pr it precedes it precedes the muqaddimah of the book. Are you with me? So he said, "Yaqulu Raji." Raji is what is a ism fa'il. The word Raji is a ism fa'il and it's rooted from the word is from is from the word Raja. It is from what? It is from Raja. What does Raja what does it mean? It means hope. It is to Lugatan, it means al amal, is to have hope. So what's the difference between what is the difference between having Raja and Tama? What is the difference between Raja and Tama? They both mean hope or want, desiring something. This is the difference between it. Yaqulu Raji, the word Raja, it is Ta'allukul Kalba when your heart is connected to the one you're hoping. You connected your heart to him. In something that you want in the future. It is something you want in the future. But you still come with what is needed from you on your side. In other words, you come with what? al fi al-asbab. You come with the means. You're not like the man who said to a sheikh, he said to a sheikh one time, he said, Sheikh, make dua for me. Allah gives me righteous kids. So the sheikh made dua for him. A period of time went by. He came back to the sheikh. He said, Sheikh, Allah make dua that Allah gives me righteous kids. The sheikh said he made dua for him. Again, he came to the sheikh. He said, Ya sheikh, make dua for me. Allah gives me righteous kids. The sheikh said to him, are you married? He said, no. Sheikh said, you never got married. No, he said, I'm not married. Ha. So he's not like that. Al-Akhdu bil asbab In other words, when you're asking and you want it, you've come with whatever is needed from you on your side. Then, inshallah ta'ala, you come with the hope. That's called raja and that's praiseworthy. Tama is not like that. Tama is madmoom. It's not praiseworthy. It's blameworthy. It is when a person wants something, but he doesn't come with the asbab. He doesn't come with the means that is needed from him. So the Sheikh is saying, يَقُولُ He is saying, who's saying it? Raji, the one that is hoping from his Lord, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Hoping from what? Afwi. What he wants from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is Afu, forgiveness. Afu means, هُوَ مَحْوُ الْخَطِيئَةِ Oh Allah, eradicate. Get, مَحْوُ الْخَطِيئَةِ Get rid of my mistakes for me. Get it rid and make it leave uh, like it re leave my my uh, my sahifa get rid of it are you with me and this is where the scholars they say there's a difference between afu and maghfira maghfira doesn't mean that it gets it gets rubbed off maghfira means it's there but Allah forgives you whereas the afu means not only are you forgiven it but it's actually what it is actually be fully removed from what? It has been fully removed from the Sahifa where it was written on. Like the Arabs, they say originally that Afu uh, means Zawalu Atariha 
So for example, they say Afadar. Afadaru, the building has fully gone. There's like in Darat Ataru, there's no sign that there was a building here. Salatan, it's gone. Does that make sense? But it's from the words which we say, that when you say Allah maghfirli, are you with me? Then it takes the meaning of Afu and Maghfirah because the word is not there in the sentence. So it is they take each other's places. But if they both come in the same context, then Afu means something different to what Maghfirah means. So here, the Qaida is what? في أصل اللغة تقتضي المغايرة. When a wow comes between two words, Allah maghfili wa'fu anni. The wow has to, the wow here is trying to say to you that these two things are different. That's the original essence of the wow. But since you, if you don't mention uh, maghfira and you just come with afu, then afu means what maghfira means. And if you only come with maghfira and you don't bring afu in the sentence or in the context, then it means what both of them mean. Does that make sense, brothers? So the Shaykh is saying, يقول, he's saying. Who is saying it? Raji, the one that's hoping. Hoping, brothers, with what? Don't underline that. The one who is hoping with coming with the means that's needed from him. What is he hoping from Allah? Afwi for forgiveness. That Allah fully eradicates and gets fully rid of my shortcomings and my mistakes and that which I have done. Allah Ta'ala forgives me for it and he gets rid of from it. Afwi is mudaf. Afwi, it is mudaf. Rabbihi is what? Mudafun ilayh. So we have yaqulu raji afwi. Afwi is mudaf. Rabbihi is mudafun ilayh. And I want you to ponder with me because something very strong is going to come out of here, inshallah ta'ala. Pay attention. Afwi is mudaf. So you just write that grammatically that is mudaf. Rabbihi is mudafun ilayh. Because if it says a mudaf, there's always the, what comes after is a. Is a mudafun ilayh. So what does rab? What is rab? Originally the word rab is a verbal noun. It's a mazdar. It's a mazdar which is a what? It's a verbal noun. <coughs> and it means tarbiyah. It's to cultivate. And that's one of its meanings. The word rab here is a verbal noun and what it means is to cultivate. وَهِيَ تَبْلِيغُ الشَّيْءِ it is to make something reach to it, its completeness. But what, with what? Like in shay'an for shay'an, to reach. The person is doing it gradually. The, the Arab means one who cultivates his slaves and he makes them reach a level of being complete. He does that for them and he does it bit by bit. If there was a time when you were breastfed, then look at it. Now you're walking or you're using your, you know, you're crawling. And then you started walking, and now you, you see, and the person is it. So he done that for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabb, that's what Lord Rabb means. That is what it, it means. Pay attention. The word Rabb can be used for other than Allah. We can use Rabb for anybody other than Allah. But pay attention. It has to be muqayyadan, it has to be restricted like in. You can't just say Rabb like that, unrestricted. You have to say Rabb of something. Are you with me? Whereas when you use it for Allah, when you use it for Allah, there doesn't have to come a what? There doesn't have to come a restriction for it. So for example, in the Quran, what did he say? Irji' go back. Ila Rabbika, your Lord. Are you with me? You can't just say go to your, back to your irji ila rabb. Go back to la la abadan. He restricted it to what? Rabbi ka with the kaf. Restrict your Lord. It has to restrict it. You say Rabbu dar, the Lord of the dar, the house. You restrict it. As for ar rabbu, like that, unrestricted. La. That is only for Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala that you use the word al for. Are you with me? The word al, al with the alif al lam in there is only for Allah. Or a rabb that is missing the mudaf, mudaf in ilayh. Are you with me? That's not correct. Allah, you can use it unrestrictedly. Like Surah 7, Ayah 15, what did Allah say? Warabbun ghafur. Warabbun ghafur. Hey, look. Rabbun is un. This, look, the talween in it is called talween with tankir. It shows generalization. The Lord that's forgiving. 
This is unrestricted. You see, uh, so we have to do that. The word Rabb, it comes in many meanings. And inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to mention five meanings that it comes in, in the, in the language. It comes as the word master, Sayyid. It comes as that. For example, in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 42, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Udkurni inda rabbika, ay sayyiduka. Go mention me next to your master. The second meaning that it shows is what? Sahib, friend. Qala ma'ad Allah. Huh? I seek refuge in Allah. Innahu rabbi, the rabbi is talking about is the, the husband of the wife that wants to commit zina with him. A sahibi, the man who I accompanied and was my friend, who allowed me to live in his house. I can't do this to him. So Rabbi here, that's what it means. It also comes as a, it also comes as a, it also as a, as a slave. Are you with me? It comes as the word slave. When Allah Tabarak, the Prophet Sallallahu said, وَأَنْتَلِي, the Prophet said, Ali, sorry, the Hadith Jibreel, وَأَنْتَلِي دَلْأَمَةُ رَبَّتَهَا رَبَّتَهَا أَيْ مَوْلَاهَا A slave. A master. وفي رواية there's a riwayah which says ربها والرابع يأتي بمعنى المصلح it comes as the meaning of a مصلح the person who brings إصلاح good to the earth and spreads خير and the fifth one is بمعنى المالك it comes as the meaning as and the word مصلح the fourth one we already mentioned that one is the one Allah تبارك وتعالى does which is تربية صح is تربية that meaning we mentioned that the fifth, which is the last one, is Al Malik. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Al Alameen. Rabbi Al Alameen. So we say, Yaqulu. The Sheikh said, started by saying Yaqulu. Raji, the one that hopes. Afwi, the forgiveness. Of what? Rabbihi, his Lord. Which Lord? Al Ali, the one who's high. Al Ali. Al Ali. So Raji is what, my brothers? Raji, if you have a fi'il mudari' which is before it, what's, what comes after it? And what's, we need a doer of that action, sah? So then Raji is the fa'il, right? So it's Raji. We say marfu. Wa alamatu rafi'ihi dhamma. Hayyah? Where's the dhamma? So we do, sa'ad. We say yaqulu Raji. Is that what we say? Huh? How why? Yeah? Naam, it's muqaddaratun. It is concealed, we can't see it. Are you with me? It is muqaddar from the akhir. Afwi is what? I already said it before. Afwi is mudaf. You with me? We said it's what? Mudaf. Raji. Is what? فاعل مرفوع and it is what? مقدرة and it's lost and it is also مضاف راج is مضاف عفو is what? مضاف إليه عفو is what? عفو is مضاف إليه ربه is what? ورب ربه is what? ربه is مضاف so then عفو is going to be what? Mudaf as well. So how many idafat do we have and how, do we, how many mudaf do we have? We have three mudaf and we have three mudaf, mudaf in ilayh. Sah? Who can repeat it? Fadal, hey? So the first one is what? Raji, hey? So for, forget the fa'il, just mention the mudaf so we, so we can understand it. Hey, so Raji is what? Raji is mudaf. Afu hey. So get, don't mention the mudaf ilayhi right now. Just mention the mudaf so it's easy. Okay. So yeah. Raji is mudaf. Raji. Hey. And Rabbi. So Raji and Afu and Rabbi are what? Mudaf. Mudaf. So you have three mudafat. Yeah. Very good. Hey, how many mudaf ilayhi? Three. three. What are they? Afu. Afu is mudaf ilayhi. Rabbi. Rabbi is mudaf ilayhi. And the dhamir in Rabbihi, the ha is mudaf, in mudaf which the dhamir is mudaf ilayhi. Three mudaf, I mean, this is called what? Qismatul Musta. This is a fair share, we've divided it properly. Are you with me? Yeah. 
according to the Balaghiyin, there's a khilaf that can this happen? Can it be a fair share like this? There's a khilaf amongst the Balaghiyin, and inshallah ta'ala, when we go to the sharh of Al Jawhar Al Maknoon, we will inshallah, inshallah, we, inshallah we'll study it then. Are you with me, brothers? We will study it there. Be idni lahi kareem. Yaqulu, he says, Raji afwi rabbihi la ali. Al Ali. So we said the Arab of Al Ali is what? Is a na'at. It is a characteristic, it's a description. It's a na'at. What is it a na'at for? Rabb. It's a na'at for Rabb. Very good. Now the question arises, brothers, which is pay attention. This is very, very important. This is very, very important. The word Ali is what? It's a na'at. It's a sifa. And it is also what? Is one of the names of Allah. So it is a ism and it is a description. So Allah says in the Quran, Wahuwal Ali Yul Adim. Is there not a name? Do the scholars not the grammarians? The grammarians they don't allow. Pay attention. This is where the disease comes from. Some people through the books of grammar and if you don't realize the, the, the things that are in there it's a problematic which is the grammarians they believe that nouns cannot be used as a na'at a sifa you with me brothers for example the word Zaid for example so, yeah names names cannot be made into a na'at a sifa they believe that for example, you can't say جَاءَ الْعَالِمُ زَيْدٌ <coughs> The alim came So the alim here is what? It's a fa'il جَاءِ فِعِلْ بَعْضِ فِعِلْ بَعْضِ مَمْنُونَ عَلَى الْفَتْحَ لَا مَحَلَّ لَهُ مِنَ الْعَرَابِ زَيْدٌ is what? Grammatically, we're trying to make it into what? Sifa Sifa is from the things that do what? يَتْبَعْ مَا قَبْلَهَا It follows the they follow the grammatical, so because the uh, because of alimun bin marfu, that's why I said zaidun. So, but we took bedel and tawkid and nat, and which was the fourth one? At for those four, they are tawabi'. That's what they call in. They call tawabi'. They follow the ones before it. So zaidun here, can we say jaa al alimu zaidun and say zaidun is a is a nat? Could the grammar is no, because zaid is a name, and a name can't be made into a nat. That's their belief. Or for example, جَاءَ الرَّجُلُ زَيْدٌ جَاءَ الرَّجُلُ جَاءَ الرَّجُلُ And I have to bring the Alif al here because the name is always what? مُعَرَّف أَصَالَةً Does that make sense? So the Na'at follows it. So جَاءَ الرَّجُلُ زَيْدٌ Here because Zayd cannot be a Na'at for Alim, an Alim, a scholar, and it can't be a Na'at for what? الرَّجُل Why can't it be? Because it's a name. And according to them, العلم لا يعنت. The alam cannot be made into an anat. We say, O oh, grammarians, that qa'idda for you may be applied elsewhere. But as for Allah Ta'ala's names, فَلَا no. Are you with me? That's not the case. Because Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala's names are Sifa. They are Sifa. Whereas Zayd is not a Sifa. The name originally is not a Sifa. But Allah's names are, are Sifa. Zayd is a name which is Jamid. Can't be taking any, you can't take any description out of it. Allah's names are what? As the Qa'idah we took. Remember as the Qa'idah. Al-A'lam, A'lamu bi'atibari dalalati ala al-Zat wa awsafu bi'atibari dalalati ala al-Ma'ani. We're going to do that qa'idah properly so we understand it. Are you with me, brothers? Allah wa Ta'ala's names are what? They are names and they all carry, carry inside it sifa. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. That is for Allah wa Ta'ala. Question that arises here right now. The question that arises is that the scholars tend to ask each other and they discuss it, which is what? 
Allah's names, are they synonyms or are they antonyms? Allah's names, Alamullahi tabarak wa ta'ala, are they synonyms or are they antonyms? There's khilaf and discussion. There's that khilaf that's mentioned. Are you with me? Opposite to one another. Synonyms are two things that are the same. Antonyms are some things, two, two things that are the opposite to each other. Nah? Antonym is an antonym for synonym. Nah? So, is it or is it not? The قول, the khilaf is tawil, arid, it's a lot of discussion. We say, sahih is tafsil, yes. Not like that generally, but with tafsil, with explanation. And that is, the names of Allah are different. They are mutabayinatun. They are different and they are antonyms. Bi'atibari from one angle. Wa mutaradifa and they are synonyms. Bi'atibari from another angle. They are the same. They are different. They are antonyms. Bi'atibari dalalati ala sifat. When it comes to showing and indicating a characteristic. They all don't show the same characteristics. Are you with me? For example, the sifatul ilmi doesn't show what sifatul ului shows. So from this angle, they are different to one another. They are opposites to each other. Are you any brothers? Sifatul sam'i doesn't show you what sifatul istiwa shows you. Sah? They all can't describe. So from the angle of dalalat wa ala sifat, it's showing you a meaning, they are different. But they are all the same in who they show you. Does that make sense? They are all showing you the same individual. So they are mutaradifa to be itibari from the angle of every name of Allah is showing you one existing one, which is Allah wa ta'ala. Are you with me, brothers? So the Sami', the Basir, the, the everything you're talking about is all Allah. It doesn't mean there's another God called Sami', and there's another God called Basir. They all show you one. Are you with me, brothers? So it is what? أعلامٌ which and what also of وهي متراديفة باعتبار دلالة على الذات and they are متباينة باعتبار دلالة على الصفات. This قاعدة الشيخ ابن عثيمين فصل in his كتاب قواعد المتلا. He explains it there and originally ابن عثيمين took it from the works of ابن تيمية رحمه الله. That we understood. علو أكوري تأهل السنة والجماعة is they divide it in Sometimes they divide into three, and sometimes they divide into two, and there's no contradiction. It is just how they observed it. Are you with me, brothers? There's two ways of dividing it. Are you with me? Um, the first one is they call it, uh, if you categorize it into two, sometimes it's easier for you that way, which is ulu, which is ulu ma'nawi. Ulu, which is ulu ma'nawi. Which is ulu qad qahrin and ulu shanin. Allah's affairs is higher than, and the other one is Allah's ability. That's the first. That's the first one. The second one is ulu. The second type is ulu in that he, he Allah tabarak wa taala is above his throne. He himself. That who tabarak wa taala. Allah is above his throne bidati, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you with me? This is the one Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah affirm for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and they affirm it with what? They say that it is istiwa Allah is above his throne. Ala arshi istiwa and yaliku bi jalalati wa adamati. That befits his majesty and him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he's higher and stronger than his creation. In a power and strength, which is Al Qahr, and he overpowers his slaves. And he said that Subhanahu wa Ta'ala in the Quran, Al Qahir Fawqa Ibadihi, Wahu Al Hakim Al Khabir. Qahir, power over. Also, the third one is Allah's characteristics or his affairs, which is characteristics. Are you with me? Are above the characteristics of the, meaning Allah Ta'ala's characteristics are complete. And they are high and above. The characteristics of the creation. Are you with me, brothers? For example, your hearing is limited. Whereas Allah, قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Aisha said, I was in the next room. When the woman came and she complained to the Prophet 
I couldn't even hear what they were whispering between himself and the Prophet. And Allah is saying, I heard it from where? قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا Allah heard it from high above. So he's hearing is what? Allah لا, لا تلتبس عليه اللغات Language that people speak. All the people in the entire world today, if they stand up and they all lift their hands up one time, one time, all of us. We all stand up one time and we lift our hands up and we ask. Allah knows everybody we are, what he asked and what every single person wants. Rather his ability is above all of that. He knows it before even he lifts his hands up what he's going to ask. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, this is what sifat which are ulu, high caliber and high level. Does that make sense? So the word ulu is ulu mutlaq. Restricting it to one type of ulu is the deficiency that the people of innovation have fallen into. They've restricted it to one. The Lord say, oh, ulu is sifat, yes, ulu is qahri, yes, but ulu is that we don't accept it. And how have you accepted some and rejected the rest? Or what grounds have you picked and chose? Sah? If the Quran uses the word ulu, it means all three of them. Are you with me? To choose which of those two or three you're going to take. This is deficiency and this is incorrect. So the Shaykh, rahimahullah, he said, rahimahullah, he says, يقول, يقول راجي. يقول راجي. So the Shaykh here, who is the one who's writing the book, who is the fa'il? Abu Bakr? Ibn Abi Qasim al-Ahdal is the author, right? He's given himself how many descriptions here? How many things has he come with? He came with the sifatul qawl, speech. He's yaqulu, and I said. And the second characteristic that he's mentioned of himself is raja, sah? Hoping from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Are you with me? Hoping. So what is it that he hopes from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala? Al-Ali. Now though the Ali's description for who like him? Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. It's not for him. This is a description of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he goes on to saying, then he goes on to saying what? Huh? The Shaykh says, first we have to understand, Yaqulu. This statement which is Yaqulu, where does it fall onto? The word Yaqulu he's saying, what is it that he's saying? Because you have Sifatul Qawl, I am saying, what is it you're saying? The grammarians, this is what they call maqulu qawl. The maqulu qawl, which is somebody says to you, I am saying, hey, what are you going to say? Till now, he hasn't told us what he's going to say. Huh? Until now, he hasn't told us what he's going to say. First of all, we have to understand as a qa'idah, and have to proper understand. The qa'idah is, that the maqulu qawl, the maqulu qawl, it has to go back to a jumla. It has to go back to a jumla, meaning a sentence. That it can't go back to a word. It's important. Or a mufrad, a singular word, but that singular words means sentences. With the example, it becomes clear. Are you with me? And inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to bring that bi'idhnillahi al-kareem for you all later inshallah ta'ala. Example of that. So it has to be jumla, and that's ob- or it has to be a mufad, which is fi ma'na al-jumla, that stands in the meaning of a sentence. The maqulu qawl. Um, that's very important. Ala kulli hal, the author, he says, after he mentions yaqulu raji, uh, you, after he bring, after he says uh, he's part uh, of the kitab which is يقول راجع في ربه العلي وهو because he's gonna mention the maqul qawl that he's saying he's trying to tell you who said it who came with this maqul qawl he says وهو and he is that person who's to come with the maqul qawl is so that's why this damir of هو it is befitting to take it back to the take it back to who Abu Bakr al Ahdali the author, يقول وهو أي القائل هذا القول. The one who's saying the speech said. So, um, what do we say? Can we say وهو or do we say وهو? Do we say وهو or do we say وهو? Two ways you can say it. بإسكان الهاء لغة. The Arabs use it. ولذلك إذا كانت قراءة من القراءات you can read like that. Is وهو instead of وهو you say وهو. 
That's a language. And there's also another reason why you should say wah, wah here right now is because lil wazn. The form in which the book is going on and the rhyme, it is to use the scan of the. Huh? So the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, those two reasons, one of them it can be the reason. Here is be scanning Hai Lugatan from the angle of the language. That the Arabs, there's a dialect that does that. And also because of the rhyme and the rhythm. Um, <coughs> that's important. So you can say, for instance, if you wanted to, Wa huwa al-ghafoor rahim you can say, Wa huwa al-ghafoor. You can say that. There's a qira'ah that the scholars, they read like that. Wa huwa, and this individual who said is Abu Bakr al-Salil al-Ahdali. Abu Bakr, we know who he is. He's the author of the book. We studied his, we said his name is Abu Bakr. Ibn Abi Al-Qasim, Ibn Ahmad, Ibn Muhammad, Ibn Abi Bakr, Ibn Muhammad, Ibn Sulaiman, Ibn Abi Al-Qasim, Ibn Abi Bakr, Ibn Abi Al-Qasim, Ibn Umar. We said he was born. رحمه الله تعالى the year when it was what he was born سنة أربعة وثمانين وتسعمائة nine hundred and what eighty four صح and we said he died رحمه الله تعالى توفي سنة خمس وثلاثين وألف one thousand thirty one thousand one thousand and thirty five in other words he lived for fifty one years صح that's how long he lived for he lived for رحمه الله تعالى the word Abu Bakr was his kunya. That's kunya too. But the scholars, they said it became also his name. The kunya became an ism. So his name is Abu Bakr. Became his name. Some people have the kunya as the name. Some people say Abu Bakr. There's no kunya. That's his real name. That's his name now. Are you with me? Salil al-Ahdali. Salil is what? Pay attention. It's fa'il bima'na al-mas'lul. It's fa'il bima'na al-maf'ul. Very important. It's fa'il, a mas'lul. And it's ism maf'ul, and it comes from the word istilal. وَلِذَلِكَ إِنَّ الْمُكْتَأِ إِنَّ مُخْ إِنَّ قَامُوسَ الْمُخْتَارِ إِسَيْ السَّلَالَةُ أَوْ السُّلَالَةُ الشَّيْءِ مَسْتُلَّ مِنْهُ. It is from any individual who comes. It's from your roots. It's your lineage. يعني أُخِذَ سَلِيلُ الْأَهْدَلِ من صلب الأهدل from the lineage of أهدل that's what the word سليل means سليل means lineage he goes back to الأهدل so he's trying to say أبو بكر إنها سليل الأهدل the one whose lineage is from the people of أهدل that's where I'm from that's where my tribe is that's where my people that's what he means ولذلك أن المسبح قاموس المسبح سليل الولد والمراد هنا سليل الولد it means what من ذريته his family his lineage and that's what he means, rahimahullah ta'ala, in this particular place. Well, the scholars, they do that a lot. That they attribute their book to themselves. And they mention who wrote it. Uh, and so the people know. Because the qa'idah, which is, قول محمد بن السيرين, إن هذا العلم دين فانظر عما تأخذون دينكم. This matter is a religion. It's a religion. And know who you take a religion from. From that angle. It wasn't because they were showing off and they wanted. Huh? That's not the case. Is that everyone knows who are authored the book, so it becomes more uh, connected to the person saying huh, that this book is taken from Fulan, who's known, his ins and his outs is known, and so the chain of how the knowledge is passed on to one another is correct. Then the author, Rahimullah, he said after that, he had said, 